Hey guys, uh, this is a kind of catch-up summary video for episode 3. Unfortunately, um, I lost the footage. Uh, I thought originally I didn't record episode 3, but I did find about 8 minutes of the beginning of the episode. Uh, I think possibly I accidentally hit stop recording and just didn't notice for the entire episode, so it cuts out after about 8 minutes, and uh, because I don't keep VODs, uh, I've turned VODs on on Twitch, so this can't happen again. At the very least, I'll be able to take it off Twitch next time if this does happen, uh, or if I, you know, lose the recording or something uh, again. Um, but for this one, what I've decided is I'm going to summarise uh, the episode 3, but I'm also going to summarise episode 1, episode 2, uh, we're going to do a little bit of kind of character introductions and summaries as well, uh, just for a, for the uh, main pl for the players and for the uh, a couple of the NPCs who turn up a lot. Um, I figure it has been in my head to do something like this for Sunkist because it is quite condensed. Like a lot of stuff happens every every episode. But a lot of it is kind of uh, role play, and a lot of it is character interaction and that type of thing. Um, so I thought I was thinking like every five, maybe every ten episodes, I'd do a quick summary of the episodes and the kind of plot points that have come before, so that if you just want to jump into where we're at, catch a live show, you can every now and then like catch up quickly with this summary video. And then, you know, immediately jump in if you want. Like, um, I wouldn't advise it, uh, but I want to give people the option because a lot of people just don't have the time to watch, you know, like long videos uh, and st stick with like three, four hour videos uh, in a kind of long story, a long playlist. Which is, you know, what, what I'm hoping we're going with Sunkist is kind of a long campaign. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, Basically, I have a... I've, I've wrote up a quick script, so if you see me looking, it's because I'm reading through the script of, of basically what happened. I thought it would be more coherent for you all if I wrote it out uh, and then kind of, you know, read it out to you guys. So you can just you can just listen, get an idea for what happened in the last three episodes. And uh, next week on Monday, when we do episode four... Technically, it's episode four. I'm going to call it episode three again, because otherwise we'll have episode four on Twitch, episode three on YouTube. It's going to be very confusing. So um, all I will say uh, about episode three and until we got through this is it was really good. And I'm really, really sorry that it that it isn't available for you guys because everyone was amazing. Uh, we were unfortunately missing Vandy, but Josh, uh, Gaming FTL, uh, Tashnar and Essek Hydra all pulled out like amazing performances and there was some really interesting stuff going on. You'll see when we get to episode 3. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through episode 1, episode 2 and episode 3 and then we'll uh, finish up the video. So, in episode 1 of Sunkist, in the first episode we are introduced to our characters. They interact some, they go out to feed, and then once they get together, they head out to investigate a reported break-in, which turns out to have occurred in the property of the, Trim of the Tremere Primogen, Herr Bastian. Seeing as this is mostly an introduction to the characters, there is minimal important plot points and more character points. So I'll summarise the player characters and a couple of central NPCs. So first character is Tess Aquila, played by OMG Vandy. A beautiful and energetic kindred, Tess likes fast cars, loud bars, and being the centre of attention. Born from a Canadian mother and Japanese father, Tess spent her youth travelling around the world with her family, until her father got into some trouble and her mother had to hide out in the UK, choosing the city of Weregate to lay low in. While there, Tess met her sire and was turned into a kindred. Interestingly and uniquely for a kindred, she can eat food. She is a Toreador and lives under the roof of a kindred who helps newly turned vampires who have nowhere to go, Winono Vipona. Uh, next one is Chris, played by Tashnor. 
Slightly more disgruntled and still acclimating to her situation, as a newly turned kindred, Chris is still coming to terms with her situation. Being taken out to a bar by Tess, Chris is uncomfortable in social settings, or at least ones involving popular, beautiful people. Uh, she is a gangrel and also lives under the guardianship of Winono, or Winnie as he is often called. Next up, Cassius Banks, played by Gaming FTL or Josh. A scruffy wanderer, charming and friendly with an open face, Cassius has been away from the city, but has come back at the request of his sire, Winono. He has been away for a while, travelling, meeting new people, and learning new things. Still, he finds Winnie hard to resist when he makes a request, and now he is back to assist his sire with the new kindred under his charge. His clan has not been named. He lives in the forest outside the city with his Irish wolfhound, Conan. Mac Marlowe, played by Ersic Hydra. A quiet and interesting man, Mac looks like a detective straight out of, out of a film noir. He is introduced as someone who looks into things, investigating and doing odd jobs for Kindred in the city. He is the one contracted to look into the theft at Herr Bastian's. He's a Malkavian and lives in an abandoned movie theatre. Next up are the NPCs. Uh, we have Winono Vipona. Vipononar. Um, an older Kindred, sire of Cassius, and a guardian of young Kindred who have nowhere to go, but need to be taught. He is Native American, and his name means trusty bear walking into shade. Kind and warm, he is a teacher for the younger Kindred and a guide. A strange parent-child relationship has formed between him and the kindred under his care. Finally, Saturday. Mostly mentioned, not many sightings, also NPC played by me. A Malkavian teenager, recently turned at age 17, he sulks in his room and is resistant to coming out, or talking, or ever being in the same room as anyone. He takes up a decent chunk of Winnie's time. And, at the end of episode 1, the crew find Herr Bastian's shop, the Tiny Nip, broken into and the Primogen missing, with signs of a struggle and a little bit of blood. They decide to head back to Winnie's Haven after a little investigating, with not much discovered. So, episode 2. Opening the episode and coming back to Winnie's Haven, the group find the sheriff, Edmund Herod, waiting for them. With a quick rundown of the situation and introductions, Edmund left them and Tess was, inf Tess was informed that there was a letter present and waiting for her, from her sire, Michael. The contents of the letter were not revealed, but they clearly shook Tess and on opening the present, being presented with a beautiful silver engraved horse pendant, Tess found that silver burnt and hurt her when she picked it up. Additionally, everyone but Cassius had left. Additionally, after everyone but Cassius had left, she noticed and read a letter, also from Michael to Winnie. This time, we learn that Michael has sighed a new kindred and is sending her to Winnie to look after, like with Tess. At the mention of the name Leah, Tess completely breaks down muttering to herself about how it can't be that Leah, and that Michael wouldn't turn the one person she suspects about something. Uh, Cassius manages to talk Tess down with a story about an old friend of his, Dusty, who taught him about real religion and real family. Then, after that, Tess and Cassius go out shopping. Uh, during this time, Chris takes Mac to an Irish bar she knows, the Clarabel. And while she has a chat and finds out some information about the break-in at the Tiny Nip, Mac annoys the patrons and gets in a fight. He breaks a man's arm, the one who attacked him, and Chris and Mac leave after finding out from Jezebel, the owner of the Clarabel, about a family of criminals called the Carricks who might have something to do with the break-in. After arranging a meeting with a friend, Mac and Chris find themselves in an abandoned warehouse meeting a Nosferatu named Kafka, who owes Chris some favours. Not only does he tell them that the Carracks were definitely involved with the break-in, 
and the kidnapping, no less, of the Tremere Primogen, he also lets them know that the Karaks are now most likely dead and buried after completing their job, and promises to look into the incident to clear his debt to Chris. During their shopping trip, Tess gets Cassius a really nice suit. For a little extra information, uh, it gives uh, him a bonus to attractiveness, because uh, Tess rolled, like, I think it was like six successes with a crit, so for a total of like eight successes, I, I had to give something there. Um, and then they move on to meet a friend of Cassius, a mage named Shelby, who shows an extreme interest in Tess, and is eventually persuaded to look into the blood sample found at the scene. Uh, that's the scene for uh, the scene of the crime for the kidnapped primogen. There's a little bit of blood that they took a sample of, and the mage agrees to look into it. The episode ends with them all agreeing to meet back up at Winnie's Haven, so Cassius can get the blood sample and send it on to Shelby, hoping they can get some leads on the mysterious kidnapping of the Tremere Primogen by humans, and it is revealed more Tremere going missing around the city that is probably connected. And then finally on to the lost episode uh, that we will unfortunately not be able to see, um, we'll call it, we'll call it the lost episode, and, uh, it will be, you know, the next episode will be episode three. Uh, at the beginning of this lost episode, the group sleep and wake up, and then all leave on their own to explore the city, as they have no pressing business, and no current leads to follow up on, really. Mac heads out from his haven to the hospital, out of town. Cassius goes looking for a small bookstore, Chris told him about. Chris is later picked up by Kafka, who offers to take her for a walk, a hunt, and a chat. Cassius finds the book hole in the back alleys of the maze, and meets Gladys, the middle-aged owner. He finds and reads some old books, and has a quick chat with Gladys. He seems comfortable there, but has agreed to meet Winnie for a trip, so he only stays for a short while. Before heading out, and going to meet up with Winnie, who takes him to a garage, a little bit outside of town. Meanwhile, Mac visits a lady in the psychiatric ward of the hospital. He seems to know his way around, and while Rose, the lady, is asleep, he talks to her about what he's been doing recently, slipping out of his Chicago accent and into a Cockney accent. When he's leaving, he runs into a nurse who recognises him, and implies he has been here before to see doctors and for medication. Chris and Kafka walk the maze, down back alleys, while Crack Kafka tells her more about kindred life, what to expect, and they kind of joke and insult each other back and forth. It culminates in them both waylaying and feeding off people who are cutting through alleyways. It does go out with a hitch, no problems, and they part ways with Chris heading back to Winnie's Haven. Winnie takes Cassius to meet Grace, the mother of Tess and reveals that part of the reason he asked Cassius to come back was specifically to keep an eye on and help him with Tess. Cassius goes in to talk to Grace and finds out that both Tess and her father have something supernatural about them. Grace was never told explicitly, but she suspects they are maybe psychic or prophetic. Cassius comes back to Winnie, who goes into more detail of his suspicions, but the camera pans away, and all we can see is the increasingly shocked and confused face of Cassius. We don't hear the conversation. Further conversation later confirms something else is going on with Tess. At the end of the episode, the group decide, after discussing things, that they will go and investigate the warehouse known to be occupied previously by the Carracks the next night, as the sun is starting to come up. Even if they're, they are dead and buried, the, there still may be answers there. So those are the current three episodes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that the footage of episode three was lost. Again, like, I... We'll, we'll be live next week, uh, next Monday, at 7pm UK time, at 2pm EST. Would love to see you there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to 
basically chalk this up as a lost episode and uh i have enabled vods on twitch as i said so even if the recording messes up i'll still be able to grab it off twitch and put it on youtube so we shouldn't have this problem again uh finally seeing as i have you here and you made it to the end of the episode i just want to say how glad i am that sunkist has done so well and you've all enjoyed it so much it's been really well received and uh, i do manage to see some of the chat obviously while i'm gming sunkist it's hard for me to do all of the things like show running uh and you know obviously there have been a few problems with like uh like camera placements and stuff like i am still getting used to doing all of that you know as the show uh like ramps up and then and then i have to like switch music and all this type of thing so it is hard for me to read the chat like regularly but i do see people like reacting every now and then when i get a little bit of time to sit back and and the characters are rping so i want to say like i yeah it is great to see you guys being so enthusiastic and everything about it um it's really cool and yeah basically like the way you guys have enjoyed it and been you know reacted to it i basically chalk chalk up to uh vandy josh hydra and tash like they are an amazing cast and if i can i'd like to encourage you all uh their links to their stuff uh especially the twitch channels are in the description go check them out give them a look uh give them a chance see see if you like them you know maybe you'll find someone new to watch um yeah as i said hopefully we won't have this problem again and i hope that the summary episode helps uh if you have any thoughts on you know like whether i should do this again let me know like um if there's more you want to be included if you want it to be a bit shorter or a bit simpler just basically this happened this happened this happened you know i, I i'm trying this as like a uh a kind of sum summarizing the the episodes thing so let me know uh also just to let you know there are more videos coming on this channel i've been working and working and honestly sunkiss got in the way and then there's a few other shows that i'm gming or in and etc that have been taking up my time but i am planning on releasing videos again um you know not just role play videos but well not just role play show videos but other types of videos as well so keep an eye out for that i'm also planning on doing a few changes to the twitch channel uh we, we're probably going to be taking it a bit more seriously so uh go check out my twitch channel if you like uh, aside from that i really hope to see you next monday uh or in the video uh when it goes live in uh on my youtube and i hope to see you then Thanks. Bye.